Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So if you're just here for the tutorial, I will put a timestamp um, right here now and I will try to link it down below if you just wanna jump ahead to the tutorial. But I thought I'd just give a little bit of a channel update and sort of what I'm planning to go back to. So when I first started my channel, I was doing um, Christmas card series and I was doing some real time tutorials and I really enjoyed them and I feel like the people watching them really enjoyed um, actually seeing what was being done in real time. The last few tutorials I've had, I've sort of sped them up a little bit more and just did some voiceover. But if I'm being completely honest, I'm not a huge fan of that style. If I'm gonna look at something to learn from it or to see how somebody's doing a technique, I like to see it being done in real time. So I think what I'm gonna do is start doing more tutorials in real time, but I'm gonna try to keep them shorter. So what I might do is try to put out a video, like let's say every Monday and every Thursday and we'll do a tutorial, but it might be the same tutorial. So I might have, you know, two or three videos of one tutorial or two videos, you know, just depending how long it's going to take. Um, and, you know, for repetitive spots, I'll try to speed it up to try to keep the tutorials as short as possible. But I really want to be able to explain and show what I'm doing it, you know, what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So I hope you guys really like this style. Um, if you do, let me know down below. If not, you know, I can try to throw in some shorter videos um, here and there as well, too. But, you know, like I've mentioned in some videos before, I do work full time. So trying to get a new tutorial out each week um, is kind of hard. So I think if I split it up into maybe an hour, twice a week, and, you know, we can just continue it and you can follow along when you have time. Or if you just want to put it in the background, um you know, so you can hear what I'm saying. You'll still get the tips and tricks from it, but you don't have to really paint along or whatever. That being said, I'm just gonna explain real quick. So this is a hot pressed watercolor block. Um, I'll have everything listed down in the description below, but I figured I'd just mention it real quick. So this is hot pressed because I'd like to do a watercolor background and then a base watercolor for our macaroons here. But then we'll go over top with, um, our Caran d'Ache Luminance Pencils. Now, if you don't have Caran d'Ache, you can use whatever pencils you'll have. I'll have the colors listed in the description below. So try to, you know, match as closely as possible if you're able to. Um, most of my tutorials, I use my Polychromos, but for whatever reason, I just thought these colors um, would work really well with my Caran d'Ache. Um, I've got my M. Graham paints here, two jars of water. I've got a couple of my silver black velvet brushes. And then this is my Princeton Neptune uh, round brush as well. So let's just get right into it. First thing I'm gonna do is start wetting the background. And I do want this to be, you know, fairly wet. And I've left my sketch as dark as possible so that you can really see it. And I will try to have it available down below for you as well. But I'm just gonna take my time wetting the background. I don't want puddles but I do want the paper to be nice and shiny. So it might take, you know, a couple of minutes to wet this and, uh, you know, get the paper where it's supposed to be. You don't want any puddles, but you do want a nice slick. And if it goes over some of the macarons, that's fine because the colors are gonna sort of like blend and, and show onto the stuff as well. Now I'm already telling that this paper dries really quickly so I'm gonna have to work pretty fast and I might actually just throw in a little bit more water to start um, so it'll be a little easier to blend because this dries really fast now if you notice that you have a paper that dries really fast like this I would suggest uh, mixing up your colors first but uh, I'm used to working on Arches paper and that paper you can, you know, it stays wet a really long time. So sometimes you just have to adjust as you're going, you know. Okay. So I'm gonna take some of this purple now and I wanna throw a little bit in over here. 
sort of where I left a little bit of that blank space. And I'm gonna let the purple and the blue mix a bit. Okay. Then I'm gonna take that yellow and start working it in up here. Now I don't want it to mix too, too much with that blue. So I'm not going to put it too close there, but I'm okay if it mixes over here because in the reference photo, there's a little bit of a pinky purple over here as well. So I'm okay if it mixes that way, but. And I'm going to get that pink going. So I'm just going to sort of put it loose near where the yellow is. If they want to mix together, they can. And then this sort of comes down the side here. And I'm just gonna mix up a little bit more. And it sort of meets with the blue. But our blue's sort of already drying, so I'm just gonna get you know, a wet, damp brush and sort of help marry them together. Just laying in a little bit of darker pink here. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with that purple and put it here where I've left that white space. So this is our dioxazine purple. And I'm just gonna mix up just a little bit more. That's a little dark, so we'll get some water. Now you saw me just dip my brush off a little bit on here. And that's just to get rid of any excess water because if I put too, too much water on while some of the paint is drying, that's where you're gonna start to get some blooms. So where we've got a little bit extra water here, I'm gonna start soaking that up a little bit and throwing it off there. Now I wanna see if I can get it just a little bit darker over here, just a touch. Okay. I'm going to get a little bit more of that cerulean blue and I'm going to sort of throw that in up here. So it's, it mixed a tiny little bit with the yellow, but that's okay. Now there's like a wall here. So this is a little bit lighter and the background's a little bit darker. So I'm just gonna go and like help that fade down. But I wanna keep, you know, this part darker than down here for sure. So that's my goal. So this is the fun stage because you can really play with it, but it's starting to get to that point where I kind of want to start leaving it. And I'm just getting most of the water off of my brush and I'm just going to help it mix a little bit. Because this is a watercolor block, you can really get up to the edges nicely too. So that's another um, nice thing about this. Now I just want these two colors to blend just a little bit more. So I'm going to kind of help them. Now I kind of, I don't like how far this yellow has gone. So I'm going to try to move it back and I'm going to put just a little bit of blue there. 
version of our cerulean blue. Okay, so again, I'm gonna dab off my brush and just lightly, you know, blend those areas and get rid of any uh, areas where there's puddles and stuff so that they blend and they don't bloom. And if I get some blooms, you know, that's fine. I don't, you know, that doesn't bother me too much. Now where this purple is coming into the yellow, I'm just gonna scoot it away slightly and just add a touch of pink in there because the purple and yellow obviously would mix and uh, make a brown. And I don't want that. Okay, so I think I like that. So we'll let that dry for right now. And then we'll come on and we'll do like a little base layer for our macaroons. And then we'll come on top with our colored pencils. Okay, so now we're going to do our wash on the macaroons. And like I said before, I don't really care if some of the watercolor gets on some of them because um, we're going to go on top with our colored pencils anyway, which are opaque colored pencils. But I just want to get rid of a little bit here on the yellow um, because it is a brighter, lighter color. So I've just got a stiffer brush here than these ones. And this is, uh, what is this? This is the Grumbacher and it's just a number six, but you can use whatever size you have. And I'm just going to take it, um, because it's got stiffer bristles, it's going to scrub the paper a little bit easier. And then I can just dab with my Kleenex and it's going to lift the color up. So especially over here where it's that purple, like I said before, you know, purple and yellow make brown because they're opposite colors. So I want to make sure I get that off um, too. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up, but uh, this is exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm just going to take the same colors that we were using for our background and we're going to use that for our macaroons. So we'll start at the top with our yellow. And I did, you'll notice I did just get rid of a couple areas since I was doing it on a couple of the macaroons. But really, once we start going over with um, colored pencils, you know, if the colored pencil is going to be darker than the color that was there, it's not really that necessary. So I want to stop, start here with this, um, our lightest macaroon, and I'm just going to blend the color up slightly because there was a little spot in the background where I missed it. And I'm just going to cover pretty much all of the macaroons except the areas where it's um, got some white in there. I'm going to miss those areas out. And I'm just going over top of everything here because, uh, and I'm leaving my sketch quite dark still because we are going to go over top with our colored pencils. And in here, these are going to be our darkest little areas. So I might speed up some of this as well because it's, it's just going to be the same thing over and over. But anywhere where I see that white or that light creamy area, we can get that with our colored pencils. So.
Okay, so that's our first layer with our watercolors. And what this first layer is gonna do, it's just gonna make um, it so much easier when we go on top with our colored pencils. You won't have to do as many layers because the, the base layer of the paper, the white of the paper is already covered. So we'll probably only go on top and do one layer of colored pencils. Um, we may end up going over top of the, the darks again just to bring out our shadows even more, but we'll see. Um, you'll notice here the pink one, I just did the whole thing because there's not actually any really white icing to it. Even the icing in here is sort of a darker pinker color. So yeah, so we'll let this dry and then we'll start in with our colored pencils. Okay, so we're gonna start in with our colored pencils and I am using my Caran d'Ache Luminance for this, but you can use whatever colored pencils you have on hand. The colors don't matter that much. Just try to pick something that's as close um, to the color as possible. But I'm gonna go ahead and start with my white. And there's just this little highlight area here on the top part of it. So I'm gonna start putting the white in first to sort of save that area. So I'm not quite pushing down as hard as I can, but I'm just slightly burnishing. Okay. Then I'm gonna go in with my um, 242, which is the primrose, and I'm gonna go around that area. Now again, probably any repetitive um, parts here or any parts that take me, you know, quite a long time, I might speed it up a little bit. And feel free if I ever um, speed up parts of the videos, you can always slow them down too or rewatch them. And then I'm gonna go in with our um, 034, which is yellow ochre. And I'm gonna sort of lay this just a little thin line along the top, and then I'm gonna start filling in a little bit around. And I did lighten the sketch um, on the outside just a little bit, but I don't mind if my pencil lines show through just a tiny bit, you know. I tried to make my sketch a little bit darker so that it's easier for you guys to see. So I'm just lightly, lightly going around that top edge. like almost just glazing it. I'm barely putting any pressure because it's not very dark up there. Okay, so I'm gonna switch over to my 037, which is the brown ochre, and I'm gonna start working on these little like details in here, and I'm just gonna use this pencil to fill in these areas. Now, some of these are some pretty small areas, especially over here. Um, so depending how big you've done your sketch or how small, you know, it might be a little hard for you to get into those areas. But the nice thing about food is, you know, it's quite organic. So these little, you know, depending in which macaroon you're looking at, they're not gonna have the same markings. So if you go outside or you don't get them just perfect, doesn't matter. 
soft just to get some variety, some different texture going on in there. Okay, so now I'm going to take the 407, which is our sepia color, and this is going to be our darkest shadow color in here and down here as well. So I'm just looking at the reference photo and the, the areas that are the darkest, that's where I'm going to put this. Now I'm gonna go back in with that um, yellow ochre color, it's the 034, and I'm gonna start filling in our main color for this. So there's sort of like a little line here under where that highlight is, and I'm just gonna fill in this whole area and pretty much this whole area here, and then I'm gonna just do it lightly around our white icing area. And I'm going to go right over top of our shadow areas that we've put in here. And I just have this piece of paper here too, um, just so that as we, you know, go and stuff, we're not laying our hand directly on um, the artwork and smudging it or anything like that. And I'm just looking at the reference photo. So the areas where 
it dips down and there's a little bit of shadow right here, the yellow is going to go down a little bit further. So it almost covers this area completely. There's just a little bit of gap between those areas. So I'm also looking at that too. And then I'm pretty much just going to fill in this bottom half. So you'll notice I'm going over the same area a couple of times and that's because when we go to blend out afterwards I want to make sure I do have a few layers on the paper so that the colored pencil blends out nicely. If you don't have enough layers it's not going to blend out and you'll still have this um, gritty grainy look. And even just blending it out, you know, one time you still might have a little bit of a grainy look, but the texture of the paper should be filled in. Now I'm going to stop about here and I'm going to leave a strip because this is sort of like a very dark shadow right in here. So I don't want to risk filling up the tooth of the paper too much and I can't get it dark enough. Then we're going to go in with our 802 and this is a French gray 10% and this is what I'm going to use um, in here for some of our shadows. So I'm just lightly going to go over the whole thing. I'm going to leave a couple of areas where it's you know right in the middle the brightest but this is definitely covering most of it. But I am going to go back and take that 242, our primrose, and I'm going to put that in those areas. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with that sepia and I'm going to put this down here. And I'm just going to go back in with that yellow ochre and just blend the edges a little bit. Just so that they will transition well. Okay. And then I'm going to go in with my black 
And I'm just sort of going to focus that like in this little um, gap between the two spots because this area is really dark. So I want to make sure I get that. But I'm not going to go on to this one yet. We'll do that one next. Okay. And I'm just going to take that uh, 242, that primrose color. And I'm just going to run that up here one more time. Again, we want to make sure we have enough pigment on the paper when we go to blend out. So I think we're ready to blend that out. I'm going to grab my Gamsol Mineral Odorless Spirits, but at this point you can use whatever blending method you like to do, whether that's going in with like a burnishing pencil or going on top with the same colors and burnishing them um, or using a white pencil to burnish, whatever method you like, go ahead and do that. Um, but. I like to use uh, the paint thinner to do that. So I'm going to start in this middle area where it's the lightest here and I'm going to start blending this out. And you're going to see just how nicely this sort of, it's almost like it melts the pencils together. but not really, but it just, it blends them so nice and so easily. This is definitely hands down my preferred method of blending. Actually, I don't really need all those. I'm going to put those over there. Because I find I don't have to do as many layers blending out this way. And I also don't have to push as hard. So I'm saving my wrist for anyone that has arthritis out there. This is going to be your best friend using your odorless mineral spirits. And it also saves your pencil. I find I don't use as much because I'm not pushing as hard. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and switch to my bigger one just to get in the big areas here. Now the first time I'm doing this, and again, I'm just going to start in the light area and go to the dark. And the first layer I blend out with my odorless mineral spirits. You can use a little bit more, but every other layer that you blend out, you have to take a little bit more off. So I'll go in, tap it off here, and then go right onto the paper. But I find for the first layer you blend out, you can pretty much just go right in and, and blend everything out. And you usually don't have any issues. So I'm taking my time, you know, really going over the areas. I want to make sure things are really blended out nicely. So I hope you can see the difference there between the top and the bottom part, how it just sort of smooths everything out.
And then I'm going to blend down into the dark area here. And it's really not taking much to blend these out at all on this smooth paper. They're blending out really nicely. And I'm just going to get the excess of that off and sort of just blend it out here at the edges. Okay, so that's our first macaroon done there. I hope you can see um, the difference, how the pencils just sort of brought it um, together a little bit. And we'll continue on with the other ones.